Can I also? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, first off, I'm uh, really proud to say that I am an IB alumnus. I'm an IB alumnus, yes. I'm also very proud to say that I'm a Mumbaiker. Yeah. And why am I proud to say that I'm a Mumbaiker is because my passion for, okay, yeah. So I'm going to talk about how we can all cooperate to welcome wildlife into our lives and all become our own little conservationists. So I've been passionate about wildlife since I was an infant. And even when I, I grew up in this concrete jungle, just like most people here, I assume, did. And even when I'm in this concrete jungle, like last night, when I was preparing for this talk, I make sure that I surround myself with wildlife in some shape or form. <laughs> yes, and I'm 27 years old and I still play with toys. And I'm a boy. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to say that at all. So, uh, so, I'm, so I'm an IB alumnus, and I have had quite the journey over the past 10 years following my passion that has taken me to some places that has taken me from urban places to, to remote wilderness areas, to less, wilderness, to less remote wilderness areas, back to extreme urban environments, and then some. And this is a homecoming of sorts, because 10 years ago, I was exactly where you were. I was an IB student, and IB had to break some boundaries to allow me to take physics, chemistry, and bio HL, which I don't think many people have done. Uh, so yeah, I, and, and IB is a great place. IB is a great place to allow you to pursue your passion because IB gives you the freedom to choose whatever subjects you want. And also, I mean, with, with things like TOK, I know your essay is not going to be that enjoyable now, but you will appreciate it later. I guarantee you that. Ditto for your extended essay. You will appreciate the 4,000 words and all the hours of effort you have to put through to write it. Uh, you will appreciate it a lot later. It prepares you extremely well for pursuing your passion just like I have, and I will continue to do so. So, I took physics, chemistry, HL against uh, what IB recommends, physics, chemistry, bio, HL. And this actually got me 24 uh, play advanced placement credits for my bachelor's in the US, in Montana. If you can't read that, I apologize. But I did my college in Montana, in the wild, wild west, in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. Yellowstone was only a stone's throw from my college. And being so close to uh, such a renowned, such a well-known, famous wilderness area equipped me really well. Like Montana, Montana State equipped me really well uh, with the technical experience and the, the technical experience to follow a profession in wildlife ecology. That took me to a research assistant position in New York, which couldn't be more different from the wild, wild west. The Big Apple's Concrete Jungle was my neck was the next pit stop on my journey, and again I went from I went pushing boundaries, pushing mental, physical, cultural boundaries from Mumbai to Montana, and from Montana to New York. New York actually was a lot closer to home, but even even then, four years in Montana and then come back to live in the Concrete Jungle. And true to form, I went from wilderness, semi wilderness area to Concrete Jungle to completely out there wilderness area. Ladakh. I, for my master's thesis, I studied one of the most poorly studied mammals on earth. They're called Kyangs. They are also known as Tibetan wild ass. Don't laugh. I didn't come up with a name. Um, so Tibetan wild ass. So Tibetan wild ass, part of the reason why they're so poorly studied is they live in an extremely harsh landscape. I was around 4,600 meters above sea level, and that's the average altitude of the Tibetan plateau that stretches from Ladakh all the way through parts of Nepal, Sikkim, and most of it's in China. The Tibetan plateau, that's a plateau that's beyond the Himalayas, called the roof of the world. It's 4,500 meters or more above sea level. Oxygen up there is about half as much as it is here. And in the winter, it gets below minus 40. And I experienced all of this, uh, and then some. I had to push a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm quite physically fit, but I had to push a lot of physical boundaries to do this. I had pulmonary edema when I was studying them. Pulmonary edema is when your lungs fill up with water when you're in the middle of a desert, and you can't breathe, and your nose bleeds, and your eyes bleed. It's disgusting. But I managed to study these animals out in the elements out there, and I managed to get an international publication out of it, and I'm proud to say that I managed to have an a, a scientific contribution on a poorly studied species, and this was all because I followed by heart, and I followed by passion, and I managed to push the boundaries to do this. 
And as I was following my passion and exploring and exploring a frontier, a, a frontier that not many people have the privilege or are able to go through because different people have different levels of pushing boundaries. It took me to working, oh, hmm. it took me to working uh, in a completely different wilderness area. It brought me to working with tiger, in tiger forests. Now, I'm sure everybody knows tigers are extremely rare today. There are only about, there are about 20 times fewer tigers today than there were 100 years ago. There's 2,000, there were 40,000 100 years ago. Uh, but tiger forests are extremely important to the whole country. And they're extremely important to all 13 countries where tigers are found. They only occupy, the, the forest, tigers are only found in the best forests. And these forests, these best of forests of India, are only occupy about 2% of our land area. But they provide lakhs of crores of rupees of ecosystem services and not to mention uh, a lot of revenue in terms of tourism and also most of our rivers come from these forests so these these forests are keystone components from an ecological standpoint from an environmental standpoint from even a future developmental standpoint it's extremely imperative that these forests are saved but this and and saving these areas as i would learn when you're talking conservation, you can't look at wildlife in isolation. I would find out following my passionate journey through in wildlife biology and conservation, one has to work with people. So what I do now is I work with the local people, the local tribal communities that surround the Tadova Andari Tiger Reserve, which is a fantastic place, please come visit. Uh, so I involve the locals in conservation through education and through active involvement in conservation activities. And I think Active participation is the best way to get more people to enjoy your passion. And this is something I learned. It's the best way to involve more people on your journey in your passion and spread the joy that you, you get out of pursuing your passion. And this is what I enjoy right now. From working exclusively with animals, I'm now working with animals and people. And this is a journey that I would like to follow. And I would like to involve all of you in this. And this is a this is a significant part of my TED talk, as you will see going forward. And a really cool activity that involved a lot of participation, which I did this past year, was planting over 5,000 trees with, uh, with, uh, with 10 villages in the Taroba buffer that, is, that have around 10,000 people. We planted over 5,000 trees around the villages. And uh, so we're all fighting, uh, we're all doing our bit to fight climate change. So one thing I have realized as I have moved along in my journey from, one, from urban area to wilderness area, from urban to wilderness area and back and forth, one thing I've had to do is break a lot of boundaries, physical and mental, and a lot of thinking boundaries to go from one area to the other. And I think a lot of this has to do, and I'm, an, I'm a city, I'm a city where I was born in Bombay. I'm a city kid. I grew up in the urban jungle. And... Uh, pursuing wildlife is not a common is not a common uh, career choice for most urban city dwellers. Most people will tell you there's no money in wildlife. Yeah, there is no. I mean, there's no easy money in wildlife. It's not something where you can think in the traditional way nowadays, the way we live, and think, okay, you know, and, and tell your parents like, okay, I'm gonna come up with a business plan. And I'm gonna be a wildlife biologist. And I'm gonna make so and so crores of rupees. It doesn't work like that. You have to really change your mindset. You have to get an understanding of what is going on out there. You have to go out there. You have to break all your mental barriers and then to do it. And I think a lot of this has to do with the disconnect that we have in urban areas from the wilderness areas, from the real jungles that we came from by walling ourselves up in concrete jungles. We are disconnecting ourselves from these natural resource areas, the tiger forests. The forest where tigers live, where all the other jungle book characters, where Baloo and Sher Khan and Bagheera, everybody lives. Where we, all, we, we once came from there, but we've walled ourselves out. And we still depend on them. We still depend on them. But unfortunately, the way we depend on them is really degrading these areas. And it really spells peril for, for not just the, the critters out there, but even us over here. For instance, when I, when I was coming back to Bombay from, uh, from Taroba, my phone said weather forecast smog. Uh, so it was Friday, smog. Saturday, smog. Sunday, smog. Smog, smog, smog. If we continue the way we are, we're all going to choke in our own emissions. And I don't think anybody over here is going to be happy with that. 
So here is something that I am proposing, a fun little activity to allow, to get, to get everybody here closer to nature, to allow wildlife into your life and to green up your own little personal micro, so uh, to green up your own little personal micro environment to break this barrier. I'm sure everybody here, everybody over here, I understand, is probably quite aware of the fact that we depend on natural resources and we must work towards building a greener society. But because we're so disconnected, we probably many people here, and it's even taken me some time, realize how exactly do I go about it without venturing too far out of my comfort zone. See, yeah, we're talking about breaking boundaries today, but not everybody can be like this huge boundary breaker, at least not on day one. It takes a step-by-step -step process. So, I'm proposing this thing, where, which I think everybody can get involved in. It will involve recycling. So take a plastic bottle. You're recycling that plastic bottle to do something good. Make a bird feeder. Cut it open. Make a little place for birds to perch in and put some grains or even some water in it. Something that birds like to feed on. And just hang it outside your bedroom or office room. This is great because this will be a nice stress reliever. Birds will come. And if, if not, uh, birds will, will come. Birds will come to your bird feeders. Uh, so you will get more acquainted with wildlife that lives around you. Birds are a great way to get introduced to wildlife without really doing much, without it taking that much time out of your daily routine, without taking without venturing, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to go out into the minus 40 cold like I did, uh, but you will get more acquainted with the birds around you. Birds are colorful, birds are entertaining, birds sing. They're a great way. They, you'll have your own little discovery channel right outside your window. I mean, let's just say, picture this scenario. You're typing up, it's, it's like, you've been, you pull an all-nighter, okay? You pull an all-nighter, you're writing your extended essay, or you're, coming up with some really important report, you pulled an all-nighter and you're massively stressed, you've had about 15 cups of coffee. Happens. Uh, and then you are about to pass out and you're like, oh God, what's, I mean, and let's say you're following your passion, which is something that you're actually involved in doing this. And you're like, okay, I mean, what's the point of doing this? I'm so stressed. But, oh, hey, look, there's like two birds like chirping. I mean, it'll instantly brighten your day to do this. You'll be involving some of the wildlife, you'll be involving some of the wildlife around you into your life more. And you'll be doing something good for nature. And you'll be recycling by, instead of throwing away those plastic bottles, you'll be using them for something good. What would make it even better is, convince somebody else also to do it. Active participation. Convince one friend every month to do the same thing. You are your own difference maker. You are your own boundary breaker little by little. Along with this, I think it would also be great if everybody had, I mean, if you're already doing this, this is fantastic. You are fantastic if you are. Uh, have a potted plant and get one more every six months and convince two friends to do it. So then you can, you can green up your own micro environment. You can create your own carbon sinkhole right in your living room. You can create your own dis live discovery channel, wildlife habitat with birds. And there'll be birds perching on your plants too. You will be greening up your own microhabitat. You'll be improving the quality of your life. And if you can convince more people to participate, maybe you might end up with something like this someday. This is uh, in Milan. It's, uh, they're trying to do this. They're trying to green up their cities. This is an endeavor that is trying to happen. If we all partake and we try and actively get involved in greening our cities like this, we can reduce the difference that we have, the massive disconnect that we have right now between us and the wilderness areas that we still derive our resources from. We can reduce the difference in emissions that we have. We can reduce the challenges that wildlife has getting into our areas and that we have going into those areas that we actually originated from. We can break those boundaries that we created ourselves. Um, in closing, I would like to say that uh, pursuing my passion has been extremely challenging, but what has helped me get through these challenges is the joy that I get. It's the joy that I get by being around wildlife, by watching wildlife, by talking to other people about wildlife, by putting little animals on my laptop when I'm doing my work. That joy and spreading that joy with other people gives me a lot of joy. 
and I'm sure everybody here has something that they enjoy, and I'm sure, may, and maybe if you haven't found your passion yet, I'm sure you will later on. And don't be afraid to pursue it. Don't be afraid to pursue it, and if you ever encounter some challenges, or some difficulties, or maybe some questions you have, just think about the feeling of that joy that it gives you when you are doing that thing that makes you passionate, whatever it may be. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It was a pleasure.